Hello, welcome to another video. As you can tell from the title, today we are doing the mid-year book freakout tag. That is what it's called, isn't it? This tag goes around everywhere at this time of year and I like doing it. It's nice to catch up on where we are for the year and I feel like this has probably been my best half a year ever reading-wise and I mean I suppose I have lockdown to thank for that and the fact that I've been furloughed from work um, because I've had so much spare time but I am doing fairly well on my reading challenge. In my 2020 goals I said that this year was the year that I wanted to read 100 books because it was a year that I had not really much else going on so I would be able to dedicate more time to reading. When I said that this is not what I meant. I didn't mean I would have literally nothing happening. Like not even work. <laughs> But, I mean, it's working out alright for my reading goal. Just checking my stats spreadsheet, I have read 61 books so far this year, which is pretty good, and that is a total page number of 21,644. I'm doing okay, I think, quantity-wise. But we won't talk too much stats-wise, we'll just get into the questions because that's really what we are here for. So the first question of the mid-year book freakout tag is what's the best book you have read so far in 2020? And I went through my stats spreadsheet, obviously, and found what was highest through my core power ratings and the answer is both of these. This probably comes as zero surprise to absolutely anybody, but it is Saint's Blood and Tyrant's Throne by Sebastian de Castell. I still think the second book in this series, Night's Shadow, is my favourite but I read that one last year. So picking between these, I couldn't. I really liked both of them. They both held a lot of value to me and they both got a 9.29 .9 on Core Pile, which is of course a five star rating. They're books three and four in the Great Coat series by Sebastian de Castell, which if you've been on my channel for any amount of time, you will know is like one of my favorites ever. I go on about the Great Coats and Sebastian de Castell so much. He is one of my absolute favorite authors. I have currently read everything that he has published. I'm really looking forward to what's coming from him next year because it sounds like it's going to be good stuff. But yeah, the Great Coats series follows Kest, Brasti, and Falcio, who are the fallen Great Coats. The king was murdered, his Great Coats have fallen, and they are fulfilling their dead king's last wishes. They, he gave each of the Great Coats one final command before he died, and they are on a journey to fulfill those wishes. Um, there's so much else going on in here as well but that is kind of the like very vague major plot but there's so much else going on in there as well. There are like weird magics, there's saints, like literally saints blood. <laughs> um, it's all very political and all of the like duchies are kind of at each other's throats. There is murder, there is torture, there is lots of horrible things in here but I think it's all so well written and I was so invested in this series and I'm glad that it's over but Play of Shadows comes out next year which takes us back to this world so yeah. Anyway, these are my two best books of the year. I can't pick between them, they got the exact same score. <laughs> Next question, what is the best sequel you've read in 2020 so far? And I mean, I could have gone for either of those two for this question, but likewise, I could have said Winter of the Witch for the last one. So these answers are interchangeable because this is the third and final book in the Winter Night trilogy. And it also got a 9.29 .9 on Core Pile, which is exactly the same rating as these ones. <laughs> I had put off reading this because I was scared of it and um, I finally read it. It had me crying within like 25 pages. It was tense. But yeah, third and final book in the Winter Night trilogy, which follows a young girl called Vasya whose mother has died, her father's remarried a devout Christian woman, and Vasya is sighted, meaning she can see the like old spirits around the house um, and she knows what they are and this new Christian woman comes in and can also see them but thinks that they're devils and she brings a priest and the priest is like converting the town to Christianity, therefore the 
old spirits are not being worshipped, they're not receiving their tribute, and the evil spirits are working their way in. And Vasya has so much to do with all of that, and she's fantastic. She's everything that society wants her not to be. She wants to run, she wants to adventure, she's wild, she's fearless, she's brave, she's headstrong, she's incredible. <laughs> There's so much to this, but if you're unfamiliar with me, I love like Slavic folklore rooted tales and this obviously has a lot of those vibes and it's left a gaping hole in my heart, quite honestly, that I have not yet been able to fill and I, I eagerly await the day that I can because this series is so special to me. They are such beautiful books and what a finale. What a finale. <laughs> Question number three is a new release that you haven't read yet but want to. The only one that springs to mind right now is Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. At the point of filming this, I'm in the middle of Kingdom of Copper and I am so incredibly in love with that book and this story and this world and these characters and everything so far. So I cannot wait for Empire of Gold. I need to get my mitts on it pretty soon because I want to read it as soon as I can because I'm in love with this story, so definitely Empire of Gold is the one that springs to mind. Question number four is the most anticipated release for the rest of the year, and it should be no surprise to anybody that it is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by Victoria Schwab, which is about a girl who makes a deal with the devil to live forever and is cursed to be forgotten by everybody she ever meets. I cannot wait to read it. Obviously, I don't know much more than that. It's Schwab. I'm gonna love it. I cannot wait. I have it pre-ordered. It's gonna be one of those books that, like, as soon as I get my hands on it, I'm gonna have to gobble up. But I say that about a lot of books and never do. But I have a feeling about this one. Cannot wait to get my mitts on Addie LaRue. Question number five is the biggest disappointment of 2020 so far. And for me, that is Murder Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. We did a live show on this for Middle Grade Monthly where you can hear all of my thoughts and feelings, but I didn't like this book. And I know a lot of people do, and a lot of people said I would, a lot of people said it would be something that I would enjoy, and it was a, one of their faves, would be really great for Middle Grade Monthly, and I did not like this very much at all. Um, it got a 3.71 on Core Pile, which is a two star rating, but this follows two girls, Daisy and Hazel, who set up a secret detective agency at their all girls boarding school. One of the girls finds one of the teachers dead, goes to find the other girl, goes back and the body is no longer there. So not only do they have a murder to solve, they have to prove one happened in the first place. Sounds great. I mean, that premise would have been pretty good, but there are so many awful things that happened to Hazel in this book that I cannot ignore. She is treated terribly, her friendships are awful, she is bullied, she is abused, they treat her in such a toxic manner and I cannot turn away from it. If that happened and there was some sort of repercussion for it or someone answering for it or saying that it's wrong, Maybe, but they never did. It was just accepted and I absolutely hated it. It made my skin crawl. So no thank you to Madam Most Unladylike by Robin Stevens. Moving on. <laughs> Question number seven is new favourite author? Favourite new author, either debut or new to you. I don't know about debut, but it's currently S.A. Chakraborty because I am reading Kingdom of Copper and I'm adoring it. I read City of Brass not that long ago and absolutely adored that. And I can't wait to get to Empire of Gold. I have just fallen in love with this woman's writing entirely. So it has to be S.A. Chakraborty for me right now. I am so absorbed. <laughs> Question number eight is your new fictional crush. I don't really have one. Nothing's really sprung to mind for a fictional character I'm crushing on, so I'm gonna skip over this one because I really don't have any. Question number nine is your new favourite character, and for me that is Vin from The Final Empire. Vin is a young girl who has been living it real rough on the streets. She's got involved in the wrong crowds. She's not treated very well, but damn, is she fierce and is she cunning and is she strong and is she witty and uh, she reminds me very much of Lila 
from A Darker Shade of Magic who is my favourite character of all time. So the similarities between them is very much why I love Vin so much from these books. I mean, I've only read the first one. I don't know much for her character development. She did do a couple of things that really I didn't like. But if I think of a character that I've met this year that I like the most, it's probably Vin. She's very much like my cup of tea. My style of kick-ass lady that's wildly underestimated, but is like actually kick ass. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry and for that I have to say The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill because I cried. I read this not that long ago and went on a little gush about it in my vlog where I read it because I did cry and I, it was a beautiful book. It's so beautifully written. Not only did I cry at the end like actual crying but I found myself whilst reading this to just be reading it and be leaking from my eyes. Like nothing particularly sad was happening. It was just such a beautiful story and so beautifully told that I was just crying whilst reading it. Just like casual tears, you know? Oh, I love this so much. So this is about a young girl called Luna who was abandoned as a baby, or that's what the witch thinks. Um, in a town called the Protectorate, every year they sacrifice the youngest child to the witch that lives in the woods, because if the witch doesn't get a baby, she will destroy their village. The witch, however, is very confused as to why this town keeps abandoning babies in the forest, and she takes them and she feeds them starlight and she passes them on to homes where they will be loved and cared for and have a great family. However, the girl called Luna, the witch accidentally feeds Moonlight and everyone knows that Moonlight is magic. So the witch has to raise Luna as her own as her magic grows and that becomes a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, such a beautiful story. If you haven't read this, I really encourage that you do because it just made my heart sore. I love this so much. Um, and this got an 8.43 on Core Pile, which is a four star. And I said when I rated it, I'm surprised it got that because I loved it so much. I thought it would be a five star for me, but it just missed the mark. But oh, I love it so, so much. So yeah, this made me cry a couple of times. <laughs> Question number 11 is a book that made you happy. And for that, I am going for Bright Storm by Vashti Hardy and also Dark Whispers because they kind of come as a package. Book one and book two of the Bright Storm Adventures or Skyship. Adventures by Vashti Hardy. These are right up my street. I gave both of these five stars. They both got a nine exactly on Core Pile. They're just so my cup of tea and I have such a fun time reading these. I cannot wait for this series to continue to grow because these are just so my cup of tea. So they follow a couple of twins, um, Maudie and Arthur. They are told in the first book that their father has perished on a trip to South Polaris. However, the facts that they are given do not quite line up for them and they don't believe that what they've been told is entirely the truth. So they take it upon themselves to get themselves on an expedition to South Polaris to discover the truth. And of course it's got all sorts of polar fantasy vibes in the first one, which I adore. It's so adventurous, so action-packed. I, I love it so much. And then in the sequel, they're traveling east to find another missing explorer. And it's definitely not got the polar fantasy vibes. It's very like hot jungle sort of vibes. But again, the sense of adventure is incredible. And uh, I just love them so much. And I had such a fun time reading them. They definitely made me happy. And it's another couple of books that I really recommend if you have not read them. And I think these could potentially be my favourite middle grade series that I've read so far, possibly. I mean, I haven't actually worked that out entirely yet, but I love them so, so much. <laughs> Next up, question number 12 is the most beautiful book that you have got this year, either bought or received. And for that, I have to say this edition of Howl's Moving Castle from the Folio Society that Becca got me for my birthday. It's a naked hardback Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. It's got this gorgeous, gorgeous cover, little Sophie, and it comes with this like slipcase as well with the door and then the little symbol as well. 
and it's it's just beautiful it's gorgeous I love it so much and there's like illustrations in here as well like each of the chapters have like these beautiful chapter headers and it's got little illustrations through it like full colour illustrations it's just beautiful and I love it so so much it's such a special like special edition of something to own so definitely this one and the last question is what books do you need to read before the end of the year and honestly loads there's loads that I want to get to but some that I have to get to is Kingdom of Souls by Raina Barron this is the next read rate review pick so I definitely need to read this one by the end of August so this one is one I need to get to pretty soon and then of course I'm doing the Elderling along which means I have the rest of the Farsia trilogy and then the ship what, is it the live ship traders is that how this series is called I can't remember but the ship ones and they're chunky uh, I mean the rest of them are up on my shelf but I'll just show you this one so they're two that I definitely need to get to but there are for sure others but it's too many for me to name so we'll just leave it at that and that is the end of the mid-year book freak out tag woo um I feel like I've actually done this at a reasonable time I'm pretty sure last year I didn't end up doing it until like August so not too late for the trends this year hopefully um but yeah that's that so if you want to chat to me about any of these books or have any opinions etc leave them down below give us a thumbs up if you have enjoyed if you aren't subscribed um fancy subscribing I would be eternally grateful for that and I will see you in the next one bye